everybody, Sean from Movie Assault here, and it is time for episode 12 of the Halloween 15 for 2022. This time out, I want to take a look at Bad Moon from 1996. And this is the back of the Blu-ray. This is what I watched to review the movie. And this is actually a movie that, uh, until recently, I had never heard of. Um, it is from 1996, like I said. It did re receive a very limited theatrical release in 96. Actually, it came out a day after Halloween, which is pretty crappy timing, if you ask me. Uh, it did not do very well at the box office, and then went to video, and uh, I guess languished in relative obscurity until fairly recently, at least as far as I'm concerned, because I, like I said, never had heard of it until I happened to see it on uh, Scream Factory's website and took a gamble on it. Um, initial reviews were pretty bad, from what I understand, but I'm glad I gave it a chance because I found it to be uh, an above-average werewolf movie. Uh, it's, it's certainly not a classic, but it's definitely warranting a viewing uh, at least once. Uh, it concerns a photojournalist played by Michael Pere uh, from Eddie and the Cruisers, of all things, and um, I believe he was also in the Philadelphia Experiment and, of course, can now be seen in uh, a lot of other less desirable movies like movies from the asylum and whatnot. But anyway, he plays uh, a photojournalist named Ted, who, with his partner Marjorie, is completing an assignment in Nepal when they are both attacked by a werewolf. She is killed and he is injured. And if you know anything about the lore of the werewolf and the wolfman and lycanthropy, uh, if you are bitten by a werewolf, you become a werewolf. And that's what happens to Uncle Ted. And three months later, he is back in the United States. He contacts his sister, Janet, played by Mariel Hemingway, who lives with her son, Brett, played by Mason Gamble, uh, who is also known as Dennis the Menace from the early 90s adaptation. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is making all sorts of gross noises and it's really distracting. Um, so yeah, Mason Gamble plays uh, Brett, who is Janet's son and Ted's nephew. And anyway, Uncle Ted calls... Janet and, and Brett over, and Janet can tell something's wrong with him, but she's not quite able to put her finger on what it is. And he's living in a trailer, an old Airstream trailer, um, on the edge of a lake in the Pacific Northwest. She invites him to put the trailer in her backyard and live out of her fridge, is what she says, so she can keep an eye on him and make sure he's okay. So he reluctantly accepts, moves the trailer into their backyard, and the longer he lives there, the more Janet and the dog named Thor, Janet and Brett's dog Thor, realizes that something is not quite right with Uncle Ted. And Thor is actually um, a surprisingly large part of this movie. Uh, it was based on a book called Thor, which was written by um, Wayne Smith and published in 1991. And Thor, the book, was actually, the story was from the perspective of the family dog and how he dealt with this werewolf in the backyard, I guess. Uh, but there were some notable changes made by Eric Redd, who is also the man who uh, directed the movie. He, he wrote the screenplay. He whittled it down to a little bit more manageable size of a story, a little bit more focused and from a human perspective and turned it into quite quite a nifty little creature feature, as, as far as I'm concerned. If you're looking for a movie sort of in the vein of an American werewolf in London or The Howling, you might be a little bit disappointed. This isn't quite as uh, classic as either of those films. It definitely does not have the, the makeup talents of Rick Baker or Rob Bottin to um, propel it along. But uh, the prosthetics and the werewolf suit that is that are used in this movie are actually pretty good for what they are. All the effects, except one notable scene, are practical effects, and for the most part, they're they're pretty well done. There are some scenes where the the werewolf looks a little artificial, but 
uh, it still never looks as bad as CGI. And the one scene that uh, is the exception to the rule is there is a transformation scene that uses a little bit of CGI and it looks really jarring. Uh, it's, it's really um, kind of out of place in this movie with all the practical effects going on. But um, this isn't a perfect film by any means. Uh, it, it does have some issues. There are uh, some continuity issues with uh, the cycle of the full moon lasting more than one evening. It's actually a full moon over several days for some reason. And uh, there's also a scene where someone fires a revolver and fires, I think, eight or nine shots out of a six-shot revolver. Um, you know, things like that. But these little uh, gaffes aren't really uh, enough to spoil the fun. Marielle Hemingway's performance might be because it's it's not particularly spectacular. It's kind of phoned in. Um, but even she doesn't really ruin it. She does have a few notably decent scenes. And uh, Michael Perret's performance, though, is is actually quite uh, enlightening. It's it's really good, uh, showing that when he's given material that he's enthusiastic about, he can actually turn in a decent performance. I know he sort of sleepwalks through some things recently, but uh, in this one, he's, he's actually really good. And I saw an interview with him that was done within the last year or so that said that he would be up for a sequel to this in a heartbeat. Um, and so apparently he really loved doing this movie. Um, either that or he just liked the paycheck. I'm not really sure because he's he's in a lot of crap lately. I'm giving him a hard time, but that's just because he's not been a lot, in a lot of good things recently. But um, yeah, if you're looking for a decent and yet kind of underrated um, or maybe overlooked, I wouldn't say underrated because it's not uh, it's not a spectacular movie, but uh, Bad Moon's worth worth a look. And uh, I gave it a, a 7 out of 10. So definitely check it out if you're into werewolf movies uh, or you're looking for something that's a little uh, off the beaten path that you may not have uh, heard of. Um, yeah, you could do a lot worse than Bad Moon. So there you go. That is my review of Bad Moon for the Halloween 15. And as always, thanks for making it this far into the video. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing or, um, you know, sharing this with your friends. <laughs> thanks for watching. Takes it, take it easy. Takes it easy. Take it easy. Bye.